another, another person who definitely thinks we should be running away from the negotiating table with Iran is the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Here's what he said after this Iranian general said Israel's destruction is non-negotiable. Here's what he said. Yesterday, an Iranian general brazenly declared, and I quote, Israel's destruction is non-negotiable. But evidently, giving Iran's murderous regime a clear path to the bomb is negotiable. This is unconscionable. Iran must stop its aggression in the region, stop its terrorism throughout the world, and stop its threats to annihilate Israel. That should be non-negotiable. Joining me with Reaction, the author of The Greatest Comeback, Patrick J. Buchanan, is with us. Pat, shouldn't it be a prerequisite that Iran stops being the number one state sponsor of terror, that they stop saying that it's non-negotiable, Israel's destruction, and that they stop saying death to America before we even sit down at the table with them? No, no, Sean. Look, in 1956, Khrushchev says, we will bury you Americans, and three years later, he was in the White House with Dwight Eisenhower. You've got to talk to your enemies. Ahmadinejad, the former president of Iran, came out and said, we're going to wipe Israel off the map. It was beer talk. They've said he was it in does office eight, Pat, that's he not beer talk. He was in office eight you years, wait, wait Sean, you, wait and he's back you, teaching you in college. You don't believe them? I mean, wasn't that a mistake we made in World War II, that the only person that seemed to really understand the nature of Hitler's ambitions was a guy by the name of Winston Churchill? Wasn't well, he the Sean, one guy that understood that, Sean, that he Ahmadi really meant what he said? Sean, Ahmadi Najad was in power for eight years. He did nothing. He was a blowhard. Are we going to be frightened by words from some character hey, in Pat, Iran? Well, what do you mean blowhard? The blowhard that supplied He's, Hezbollah rockets and other terror groups rockets to fight a proxy war against Israel. They're fighting a proxy war now against Sean, Saudi Arabia and Yemen. This is all talking? Iran, Pat. What, what part of this Look, are you missing? You, I'll tell you what, Sean. In Iraq, Iran is fighting ISIS and al-Qaeda. In Syria, they're fighting ISIS on behalf of Assad. In Yemen, you they're not they're involved there. You think that the they're Iranians our are friends? our friends? Sean, they're not. They're fighting our enemies. I'd rather have Iranians up there fighting in Tikrit and dying than American kids there. And the reason Iraq is in the camp now very much of So you Iran, don't have any problem be, with the, the seal of problem. Barack Hussein Obama ultimately being on an Iranian nuclear weapon with their history of being a state sponsor of terror, Sean, fighting proxy wars, threatening Israel Sean, to annihilate them and the United States. You have no listen, problem with that. Listen to the American to head of intelligence. He says Iran does not have a bomb program as of 2013. Secondly, if they start building a bomb, we will know it. Third, Iran has made some concessions that are not enough that makes them less able Go to get to, to a bomb. Go back to 2012, and we found out they were far more advanced in their nuclear production and program than we ever thought possible. That's what our Sean, own, that's what Obama's own government said. Your friend Bibi has been talking about Iran getting a bomb since 1992. In 2006, he said they'll be building 25 bombs by the end of the decade. Patrick are they Buchanan, known? you don't have any concerns at all about sitting down, by the way, and there's a big difference between the Cold War and the Russians that had nuclear weapons and America paving the way for them to get nuclear weapons, considering I would argue that before any negotiations take place, Pat, mm -hmm. I'm not against negotiations, but first you have to change your behavior. Behavior. Stop being a state sponsor of terror. Stop fighting proxy wars. Mm -hmm. Stop uh, funding Sean. groups like Hezbollah and, and other groups. How's that? Sean, Sean, Pat. in... In Syria, in Iraq, okay, the Iranians and their allies, Hezbollah, the Shiite militia, who are a dreadful bunch, Assad, are fighting ISIS. They are fighting al-Qaeda. The Houthi rebels in Yemen are fighting ISIS and al-Qaeda. And how al ironic that we're serving as their air force in those instances, in large part. Who are part, they killing, we, Sean? In, in they large are killing part. our enemies. They are well, killing our enemies. Okay, and then we're also fighting against them in Yemen with the Saudis. So explain well, that, that logic to me. How I, is that a comp you tell, listen, comprehensible I'll tell you what the Saudis policy. are going to do. The Saudis are making a terrible mistake. If they go in there on the ground, it'll be their Vietnam. When I was a young editorial writer, Egypt went down the there. the Saudis Nasser don't did. go in there, then they're going to be surrounded by the Iranians, which, by the way, wants to clearly build a huge power for themselves in the region. And that would be more dangerous, as Sean, the Jordanians and Egyptians believe. Sean, the reason Iran's going to be a power in the Gulf is because your president, George W. Bush, 
invaded Iraq and turned it into an alliance. Excuse me, Pat, I, I, if you're going to bring it up, point out that the surge worked and Bush's admonition the in surge 2000, worked. hang on, and this 2007, if the admonition of keeping intelligence and training troops on the ground were met by Obama, we wouldn't be in this position, would we? Sean, would the, we? Reason, the, the reason we're in this position is because Saddam Hussein, a thug, was overthrown, his state was destroyed, his army was broken up, elections were held by Bush, democracy crusade, right, Pat, and the Buchanan, Shia won, you and believe, we lost You Iraq. believe that we can make a deal with the Iranians? You believe peace with the Iranians in our time, is that what you're saying? No, I'm not scared of Iran, for God's sakes. They don't have an atomic bomb. Now you sound bomb. like Obama. Iran is a no. tiny country. They're not a threat. You believe that? Bibby's, Bibby's sitting on 200 atom bombs, and he's fretting over Iran, which mm -hmm. hasn't even produced weapons And this is going to create an arms race that the likes of which the world has never well, seen before. With one Sean. distinction, Pat. Now Iran you're putting nuclear a... weapons in the hands of radical Islamic mullahs. You Iran, really United want that? States. You United don't see States, that as a danger? The United States could finish off Iran in an afternoon. What are you frightened of, Sean? Okay. Well, I think it's a bad idea. Just like we finished off North Korea in, uh, in an afternoon, right, I think it's a bad idea for them to get a bomb, right, and I think we can stop it. I think you're dreaming. All right. Thank I you, think, sir. I think you're hysterical, Sean. I'm hysterical. I'm, I don't want the mullahs of Iran. I take I their words either, seriously. I don't either, I think we could stop Just them. like Churchill took the words of Hitler seriously, and Chamberlain thought he could have peace yeah, in his did time. Churchill, how did Britain end up when it followed Churchill's advice? Well, when they followed, they actually won the war. That's how they won did. Won the war? They wound up on American food stamps. Well, they oh, lost the I, empire what was their because option, of getting Pat, not to fight the Nazis. No, their option was to form an alliance with France and tell the Germans, if you cross it, you're at war, right. and they wouldn't have had a war. You're, you're dreaming. You should right. read my book. You should read my revisionist history, Mr. Buchanan. War. I like a lot of what you say, but you're dead wrong here. All right.